All right, welcome everyone. Uh, this is our seven o'clock Eastern, six o'clock Central Virtual College Exploration. We are super excited that you guys are joining us today. My name is Amy. I'm going to be the facilitator of this session. So a couple housekeeping rules before we turn it over to Marquette University. Um, so you may be asking, how do I ask questions during this presentation? So you can use that Q&A button that you see at the bottom of your screen to type in a question. Um, our presenter will address them as she's able to. And then of course, at the end of the presentation, there will be time for questions. So your camera and microphone are off the entire time, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, so we, um, you can see us, we can't see you. So again, you know, take advantage of using that time to write stuff down or take any questions you may need. Um, if you would like to sign up for any more of these sessions, uh, please, please feel free to. We have many more over the next week and even into next week. So you can do that through nac.org slash virtual college exploration and sign up for any others. This presentation will be recorded. So if you have um, anything that you'd like to add um, or if you wanna go back to anything, please feel free to. So I am gonna go ahead and turn this over to our presenter at Marquette. Um, so please go ahead and enjoy. Hi folks, my name is Jeanette Von Hayden and uh, as Amy mentioned, I am the Regional Admissions Counselor for Marquette University. Um, I'm really excited to get to be here with you folks today and talk a little bit about the college process in what is probably one of the most unique years that we've had in admissions. Um, so like I said, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, if you're not familiar, Marquette University is located right in the heart of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So we are a very urban campus. Um, we do have the national recognition of being a top 100 university every year. Um, but what I think is nice about our institution is we have that national recognition. We have the feel of a big campus. But in terms of size and opportunities for you, it kind of has that small school feel. We have right around 8,000 undergraduate students. These students come from all over the US, primarily the Midwest, but we also get students from California, Texas, New York. Uh, so it really enriches your college experience and allows you a lot of opportunities to, to meet people from diverse backgrounds and different experiences. As far as that 8,000 number, when you see it broken down into the classroom, the average class size is about 23 students. Um, and that holds true even this semester with COVID and, and some of our classes going online, some being in person. What we love about that number is, again, that access component. Access to getting to know your faculty and your professors, getting to know your classmates, uh, really building that network for your future. That network is going to help you when you're looking for jobs, when you're trying to find those uh, undergraduate research opportunities, those connections become really crucial to your academic experience. In terms of total enrollment, we have just over 12,000 students enrolled at Marquette. So we do have some professional programming opportunities, uh, things like uh, a, a law school at Marquette, Wisconsin's only dental school, as well as a robust programming for graduate opportunities, um, graduate degree opportunities. What's really nice about that is the, the idea and the opportunities related to accelerated degree programs. And we'll kind of talk about those a little bit later. Um, but just know that if you are hoping to get your advanced degree, that there are a ton of opportunities for you to do that at Marquette. And we'll kind of talk about these other numbers about majors and student organizations. Um, but I really want to address one of the biggest things about Marquette uh, in our student experience. And that is the fact that we are a Jesuit university. If you're not familiar with the Jesuits, don't stress. The Jesuits are an order of Catholic priests founded way back in the day by a guy by the name of St. Ignatius of Loyola. There are 28 co Jesuit colleges and universities in the US. Um, and really what the Jesuit identity means in terms of your education is this idea that your degree is, has a bigger purpose. It's not just there to help you earn that, that job post-graduation. It's not there to help you just earn that incredible paycheck. It's also there to help you create some sort of change, um, becoming change makers in the communities that you go in into post-graduation is really important to Marquette and the Jesuit identity. About 50% of our students do identify as Catholic. The other 50% identify as other religions, maybe non-religious. Uh, so we really are a welcoming place for all folks of all different faith backgrounds. 
as I mentioned, you'll kind of see Jesuit education in two different approaches on campus. And the first one I want to address is service because service is really crucial to the Marquette experience. Uh, we do not require our students to get involved in volunteer work or service learning in any capacity, um, but over 84% of our students do engage in it in some capacity. Each year, our students complete just about half a million hours of volunteer work, whether that's helping out in soup kitchens throughout the city of Milwaukee. Um, some of our law school students and pre-law scholar students actually do free law clinics uh, throughout the city of Milwaukee. Service learning and study abroad trips are really big and crucial to the Marquette uh, background. So you'll really see service has a big role in the Marquette experience. In fact, it's one of our four pillars, uh, four pillars that really identify Marquette. It spells out self, uh, it stands for service, excellency, leadership, and faith. So those are four really big identities at Marquette. The other way you'll see Jesuit education is in terms of the Marquette core. So generally when you go off to college, you have to take your general classes, your gen eds as they're commonly called or core courses. Uh, at Marquette, we call this the Marquette core. We call this the core because all of our students, regardless of major, will take a core. Well, one of the ways that our core is a little different is that you're not taking those uh, 30 credits or so your first two years, you're actually taking them throughout all four years. What's nice about that is it allows you space to put in classes that you may be more interested in related to your major. It also means that when you're taking that history class or that psychology course, you're actually gonna be able to tie it into your major. So you can learn about the psychology of consumers if you're a business student. Uh, maybe your speech class is going to be really helpful for health sciences. Um, another really unique class that a lot of our nursing and health science students take is actually called uh, religion and healthcare. So how can you as a healthcare provider and practitioner help support the religious identity of your patients? Um, Cura personalis, personalis is a Latin phrase that rings true on a lot of Jesuit campus and Cura Personalis means care for the whole person. And so not only do we have that towards our students, we want our students in the healthcare fields to also pass that on uh, to the folks that they end up working with. So that's the kind of big other way that you will see Jesuit education on our campus. Um, but really know that that experience is meant to help enrich your education and help you really think about the big picture. Think critically in uh, using different lenses and approaches in the day to day problems that you're going to be encountering within your field. Because we have that core that spreads throughout all four years, we are actually a direct entry institution. And if you're not familiar with what it means to be direct entry, it means when you apply to Marquette, you're actually going to apply into one of these seven colleges that you see on your screen. Um, and you're gonna start in that class, in those classes right away from day one. So I do wanna briefly talk about these seven colleges to help you kind of orient yourself in terms of academics at Marquette. So first and foremost, the College of Arts and Sciences. This is our largest college on campus and it encompasses liberal arts degrees, natural sciences, social sciences. Um, there's a ton offered there academically. They also are recognized for nationally for their advising model. Um, and it's a model that has been adapted throughout all seven colleges at Marquette. Uh, but arts and sciences did it first and they do it best. So I, I strongly encourage students to look at the College of Arts and Sciences if you're thinking about maybe a psychology major, uh, social welfare and justice, maybe chemistry, biology. Those are all housed right in that college. Next up is the College of Business. Uh, this is a very hands-on college because our students are starting in their business classes right away, including a class called Business Day One that lets you try all of the different business majors that we have at Marquette, from real estate to supply chain, uh, accounting, finance, everything. But because you're starting earlier in your career, you're actually uh, eligible for internships a lot earlier. So you, most of our business students are getting two or three internships by the time they graduate. And those aren't just internships with local Milwaukee companies. Um, they actually are, Milwaukee is actually home to seven Fortune 500 companies uh, in the area. Companies like Rockwell Automation, Northwest Mutual, uh, Kohl's Corporation. So you're getting kind of that big exposure. So if you want to leave the Midwest post-graduation, you most 
certainly can. Uh, you can head to New York, you can head international. Next step is the College of Communication, which very similar to the College of Business, uh, offers a lot of great hands-on opportunities, both in the city of Milwaukee, uh, like the Neighborhood News Service that talks about um, kind of the, the more quiet news articles that are happening locally in the area. So what are some of the, the um, service experiences that are happening with Marquette students. Uh, maybe if there are new companies being built uh, in the city. So it's a really cool opportunity for comm students to start practicing their journalism uh, skills, um, but also nationally. The College of Communication does a Diedrich Deep Dive program where they will take juniors in your second semester or seniors um, and actually take you out to pockets of alumni throughout the nation. What's really nice about that is you're able to network and our alumni are very passionate people. And so it's really fun to see our soon to be alumni connecting with our current alums um, and really making those professional connections, whether that's in theater arts. Um, sometimes they go out to Hollywood and they're getting to meet with Universal Studio producers and things like that. Next up is the College of Education. All of our ed students are required to double major, but it doesn't extend your time. Um, it's really just to help our students either find a content area and maybe get some additional skills and um, knowledge to really help support their education experience. They also are in the classroom from their very first semester to help reinforce if this is the path that they want to be. I myself thought I was going to be an education student until I was in a classroom with kindergartners and said, uh uh, this isn't for me. So now I'm in admissions um, and I wouldn't have had that experience if it wasn't for uh, getting to be in the classroom early on. Next up is the College of Engineering, which has all ABET accredited engineering programs like mechanical, electrical, uh, biomedical. So there's a lot of great opportunities. It's also home to the world's oldest co-op program. Um, so co-op, if you're not familiar, is a nine month work experience. We're actually able to dive into the field of engineering and get that hands on experience. Uh, it's a little bit more in depth than an internship would would be. And so students who complete the co-op program actually have a 100% placement rate, as opposed to the 98% <laughs> placement rate that our engineering graduates have each year. Next up is the College of Health Sciences. So if you're interested in the medical field, this would be a great home for you. Health Sciences is home to biomedical sciences, exercise physiology, uh, clinical lab sciences, as well as quite a few accelerated degree programs, which I mentioned earlier. Um, but an accelerated degree program means you're actually able to apply into your master's or graduate degree earlier on, sometimes as early as an incoming freshman. Um, and then you're conditionally admitted into that grad program. So for example, Marquette is uh, one of our more popular programs is physical therapy. And that's housed partially in the College of Health Sciences. So you could do a major in biomedical sciences or exercise physiology, tack on a few extra years um, and get your doctorate in physical therapy. That is a six year program instead of a seven year program. So it's a really great opportunity. We also have a program for physician assistant studies if you're interested in that as well. That's a five year instead of a six year program. And then last but not least is our College of Nursing, which is by far one of our most popular majors at Marquette. Uh, nursing is fabulous because of the hands-on experiences, again, early on because of that direct entry component. Um, students are able to work in the, the sim lab, um, which has all of these sims or fake people, um, and they can cry, they yell at you if you're doing something wrong, they can talk back, give you a little sass, uh, but that exposure really helps our students to become some of the best bedside manner nurses in the city of Milwaukee. And so we constantly get the feedback that our nurses, when they hit those clinical rotations, are really prepared to that patient interaction uh, component, not just having the great hard skills that are needed to be a nurse. And then across the bottom, you'll see those three professional school opportunities. I briefly want to address um, undecided students. So if you, like me, uh, didn't quite know exactly what you wanted to study in, you can actually apply into six out of the seven colleges at Marquette as an undecided student. The only college you can't apply into is nursing because there is one major in nursing. And usually if you want to be a nurse, you know you want to be a nurse early on. So a few fun facts about Marquette and the academic experience that you'll get. 
because one of the reasons we have such great academic opportunities is because of our location in the great city of Milwaukee. Um, as a Wisconsin resident, if you couldn't tell from my accent, um, I love the city of Milwaukee. There is just so much for students to do. It's a gorgeous city, especially in the summer and right around this time as all of the leaves start changing on campus and around the area. We are about a mile and a half away from Lake Michigan, a mile from downtown, so still a very accessible campus community, which I'll zoom in on in just a moment. Um, Milwaukee, if you're not familiar, is about an hour and a half away from Chicago, so from Indianapolis, it's just about four hours to get up to campus, about four and a half, depending on if you hit that Chicago traffic. And as a Chicago resident, I know how bad that can get. So um, it's really nice because you're still relatively close. Um, there is still Amtrak if you want to hop on the train to get back and forth. There's opportunities to fly. Um, there is an airport just south of Milwaukee that you can hop into. Um, and so there's a lot of great opportunities for you in terms of transportation. Once you're in Milwaukee, all of our students do get a bus pass, uh, and that bus pass is your key to traveling and exploring the great city. So you can head down to the third and fifth ward if you're looking for something fun to eat or do on the weekends. Uh, you can get out to the, the lakefront if you wanna kind of reconnect with nature and chill out. That's my personal favorite. I love to grab a coffee at Collectivo uh, and go sit uh, and kind of reflect, take a moment to chill before getting back to the hustle and bustle of the city and hustle and bustle of campus. These are some of the, the big neighborhoods that I was just talking about to kind of help you orient yourself um, around the city of Milwaukee. And this is our physical college campus. So everything that you will need as a student is highlighted on this screen. Everything from the academic buildings, your lecture halls, residence halls, dining facilities are within this highlighted region. One thing to know is that there are no fences or barriers around our campus. So we very much are a part of our campus community, but it's not like you need to hop on a city bus or drive from your residence hall to your campus uh, or to your class or anything like that. In the middle of your screen, you will see Wisconsin Avenue. That is the red tree lined street that you see. Uh, and that's exactly what it looks like right now. One of my coworkers sent me a picture the other day that the leaves were starting to change and it's it's just gorgeous. Um, but on the right hand side of Wisconsin Avenue, you will see our academic side of campus. So this is where the simulation lab is for nursing students, uh, where all of the lab facilities are for our natural science students, the library, the law school, dental school, your classrooms, everything is housed right there. And then if you pop back over to the left side uh, of Wisconsin Avenue, you will see the residential side of campus. So that's where all of our residence halls are, our student center, the dining facilities. Um, we do require our students to live on campus for the first two years. And then after that point, you can move off campus. Many of our students who do move off campus are actually moving right into the community surrounding us. So you'll see those turquoise roofed buildings. Uh, that is technically off campus housing. Um, and so there's a lot of opportunities where you're only a block or two away. You don't have to go live in downtown and pay the, the downtown rent prices. So uh, really nice that everything is very accessible for you. In terms of what you're going to do in the free time, I mentioned Milwaukee has a lot for you to do, whether it's finding your favorite cheese curd place. Um, custard is huge in Milwaukee, if you didn't know, uh, but basketball is also big, both to Mar Marquette as well as the city of Milwaukee. Um, Marquette is by and far the number one tradition on our college campus. So we're keeping our fingers crossed for a healthy uh, year this year. We're hoping that we'll be able to get back into that Big East basketball play. And But all of our varsity teams do compete at the division one level within the Big East. Um, there are 14 varsity teams. Our most well-known, of course, men's and women's basketball. Uh, we usually make it to the national tournaments in both of those each year. So again, we're hoping that we'll have a season this year. But we also have a strong tradition in lacrosse, um, volleyball. So a lot of cool opportunities for you to support the Marquette community if you're not an athlete. If you are an 
if you are an athlete and maybe you want to play at a different level, we also offer club sports and intramurals. What's nice about both of those is that you're still able to compete, um, but it's not that big division one level where you have a lot of practice time and things like that. In fact, club sports actually still travel. So if you do want that similar feeling to your high school um, team, you can check out some of our club sport teams. If you're looking to try a new sport or really just want to do a sport for a couple weeks at a time, intramurals are definitely where it's at. Uh, at Marquette, we've actually split our intramurals into different levels. So we have more competitive leagues and not so competitive leagues. I myself always played in the not competitive leagues. I'm not coordinated at all. And so it's just kind of a fun way to get out of your residence hall room, meet some new people throughout campus, uh, and also stoke that competitive spirit. Um, one of the things about Marquette in terms of our community is in terms of your academics and opportunities for involvement, there are so many things for you to get involved in that you won't really sense a, a feeling of competition at all. It definitely is a community and we want everyone to be su successful. Where you will see the competition is in terms of these intramurals because it can get heated real quick, um, but it's always a good time. It's always a lot of fun for students. Athletics aren't the only thing that you can get involved with though. Marquette has over 325 different clubs and organizations for you to explore and have a little bit of fun. 81% of our students are involved in student organizations, um, whether that's getting involved in the President's Running Club. Um, so our president right now, President Level, loves to run. One of the things he implemented when he came to campus was a running club. And so we do have students who uh, will run out to Lake Michigan or check out different trails with the president all the time. Um, there's a coffee drinkers club, which is definitely my speed, um, where they explore different coffee throughout the city um, and check out different uh, local shops that you can kind of explore and have fun as well as professional organizations. So maybe you want to enhance your marketing uh, and get to start networking with marketing firms in Milwaukee, uh, but also marketing alum. So there's a lot of cool opportunities for you to kind of explore, add to your resume, but also have a little bit of fun while you're in the campus. Study abroad is also becoming more and more popular at Marquette. About 29% of our students study abroad in some capacities. We do have study abroad worked into every major at the university. So even nursing students who have a more rigorous four-year path is set in front of them, um, or rigid four-year path, I should say. Um, even they can spend a semester studying in Australia if you want, or just do a semester or a, a week-long trip that you can explore a new country, um, but still come back to, to your regular, regularly scheduled programs. Um, and internships as well. I mentioned a ton of opportunities within business and communication, but internships are not just siloed to those two colleges. Those opportunities are spread throughout the entire university. You can get connected with the Career Center to help find those opportunities. Um, and those experiences really help boost up your, your education and help prepare you for that next step. All right, now that we've spent a few minutes talking about the university and what we have to offer, I do kind of want to zoom in on the college fit. That's what we're here for, talking about how you get to college. I also think there's this misconception that college fit means there is only one right university out there for you. I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think finding your college fit can take a lot of different approaches. And so when I work with students, I like to really emphasize three, these three fits. And the university that you're going to call home for fall 2021 or 2022, whatever semester you decide to join, it's going to need to fit these three areas in order to make it comfortable for you to call home. So I wanna start by talking about the academic fit. For you as a student, academic fit is probably going to refer to, does the school have my major? Do they have other majors in case I change my mind? What academic opportunities are out there for me? As a university, this is where the admissions process fits. So generally, uh, the Marquette application opens in mid-July. It's currently open now for seniors. Um, and Marquette is on the Common App as well as having our own application. There is no preference as to which application you fill out. So you can fill out whatever is easiest for you. Uh, you will not get special treatment or, or you'll, you'll get no treatment or whatever uh, based on what application you submit. There's no benefit to either one. 
The other thing to note is that there is no application fee to apply to Marquette. So you can submit the Common App and still not have to worry about paying an application fee to get into the, to submit your application. The piece that is required, of course, is your high school transcript. Um, other optional items, um, you can send any additional academic information that you may have. Uh, we'll consider, of course, any letters of recommendation that you may choose to submit to us and test scores. So I know test scores are a hot topic this year uh, and Marquette is actually on year two of being test optional. We want test optional last admission cycle in part because we know that the test score doesn't always define a student. We want to give you the autonomy to decide uh, how you want to represent yourself to the admissions committee. That is going to hold true for this year and it will hold true moving forward into the next semester and the next academic cycle. So know that you do not have to submit a test score to the university in order to be considered for admission or receive any of our scholarships. We are truly test optional. There's no interview to replace it or anything like that. So when we're reviewing an application, we generally like to look at your transcript, your essay, again, any of those supplemental materials you look for. In terms of the transcript, we're gonna be looking at your grade trends. So how have your grades changed over the years? Uh, we're going to look at your, um, uh, subject area, so perhaps you're interested in engineering and applying into engineering. We're going to look at your math and science grades. Maybe business is the major you're selecting. We're going to look at your math grades, communication, we'll look at English. So we like to look at those areas to make sure that you've taken rigorous courses that have set you up for success in that field. Our uh, application timeline, we are on rolling admissions. So our decisions are gonna start going out in mid-October. They are actually set to go out this week and they will continue on a two week rotating basis. Um, so once you submit your application, it usually takes about two, two and a half weeks to hear back from us and get your admissions decision. We do have a priority deadline of December 1st. So make sure that you're submitting your application by that deadline, as well as all the additional materials, um, especially for programs like nursing and speech pathology, which do typically fill up on December 1st or December 2nd. Um, we will consider applications post December 1, but only if there's space available in your college. So make sure that you're getting those materials into us by that date. All right, we're gonna move right along then into the financial fit. So total cost at Marquette is just around $60,000. And I know that cost can seem very overwhelming, but I wanna help reassure, number one, it includes your tuition and fees as well as room and board. Um, and number two, 99.9% like of our students receive aid through the university in some capacity. And so when talking about what that aid looks like for you, there, to keep it easy, there are four types. So the first is an automatic merit scholarship called the Para Marquette Scholarship, and that is going to come in your admission letter. So you're gonna get that letter, it's gonna have the college you're admitted into and the scholarship amount that you have been awarded. And that is good for four years of undergraduate work. The next type of aid that you can qualify for is need-based aid through the FAFSA, or if you're ineligible to submit the FAFSA, you can fill out the net price calculator. Work with me and we can figure that out together. That covers not only federal aid, but also institutional aid. So I strongly encourage everyone fill out that FAFSA and submit it to the university. It doesn't mean you have to accept the aid that is awarded to you, but it does help you get qualified potentially for any additional need-based aid that the university may have for you, especially in this phase of COVID where folks may be losing jobs or have changes in uh, income levels. All of that will be considered by our admissions office or by our financial aid office. Office. The third type of financial aid is our scholars and scholarship application. This is the additional scholarship program that you can apply for. So you do have to apply for these after you've been admitted. And it covers about 10 additional scholarship programs, uh, including programs like our pre-law scholars and pre-dental scholars, which is a fast track to that accelerated degree. We also have uh, the Nancy Parisi Scholarship for nursing students, the Diedrich Communication Scholarship, Opus Engineering Scholarship. So there are a handful of additional scholarships that you can choose to apply for using that Scholars and Scholarship application. That is due on January 15th, which you will see on your screen right there. 
Then the fourth and final type of scholarship um, or financial aid category um, are additional scholarships that you do not have to apply for. In order to qualify for these, the only things you need to do is apply by December 1st and get your FAFSA into us. If you do those two things, you will automatically be considered for scholarships. And uh, this covers college dean scholarships, alumni donated scholarships, and things like that. And those are awarded in mid-March. So you will know your entire financial aid package for the university by mid-March. Um, our need-based awards will go out in February, which is that date you see on your screen there. So given all of that information then, you have until May 1st to make your commitment to the university and decide if this is a personal fit for you. And personal, personal fit encompasses academic and financial fit, but also can you see yourself as a student? As cheesy as it sounds, when I'm working with students, one of the things I hear the most when they decide, when I ask, what made you decide to commit to Marquette? Why did you choose to come here? It's because they walked on our campus and they said they could feel themselves being a student here. They felt like they belonged in our community. Um, and, and I encourage you to come visit if and when you're able to visit. We have visits open already um, on our, our website. So we are open for in-person visits. They are pretty limited because we want to respect the safety and health of all visitors and staff members. Uh, but we also have a plethora of virtual opportunities. So you can watch videos from current students and faculty. You can set up an academic information session if you wanna learn more about our College of Arts and Sciences, for example. And coming up on this sat Sunday, October 18th, we will be hosting an open house where you'll get to listen to a student panel, those academic information sessions, financial aid information sessions, all of that is available. So that's coming up, like I mentioned, on October 18th. You can register on our website. And I do want to leave you with my contact information. So if you do have any follow up questions, I would be more than happy to help answer those. Um, as I know that this can be kind of a, a weird and trying time, but as your admissions counselor, I'm here to help answer any questions that you may have. So I am going to stop screen sharing here and we'll see if we have any questions at this time. All right, it looks like a question came in regarding the review process and how that works being a direct entry institution. So I do want to kind of clarify that a little bit. So in terms of what we're looking for on an application, I think it's important to know that we do a holistic review. And I know a lot of universities say that, but what does that mean exactly? So for Marquette, there is not one single factor that will get you in or get you denied from the university. We like to look at every piece from your activities or resume, uh, to your essay, to those grade trends, the rigor, the school you went to, those things all kind of combine to help us make our admissions decision. And what we're looking for is a student who we feel is academically prepared to take on the rigor of Marquette University. So for, as I mentioned, for like engineering students, we wanna see that you've earned A's and B's in your math and science curriculum. We also want to reaffirm that if maybe you have a lower GPA, but it's because freshman year was a really hard transition from middle school into high school, uh, we will consider that as well. So maybe your grades were lower in grade nine, but grade 11, you have A's and B's. We'll consider that in the review process as a positive for you. So we'll consider all of that. The average unweighted GPA at Marquette, just so you're aware, last year was a 3.4 on a 4.0 scale. And that number is true of both test submitting students and non-submitting students. So we think that's really important to know in that holistic review and when we reaffirm if uh, what the role test scores play in the process. The average ACT and SAT at Marquette, just so you're aware, the ACT was between 25 and a 29. The SAT is between 1220 and 1360. So hopefully that helps you get a feel for Marquette um, in our academic requirements. Let's see what other questions. Okay. 
It looks like a question came in about Milwaukee and uh, kind of those internship opportunities and how do you get those. So at Marquette, um, a lot of our colleges will have college central um, career centers. So for example, if you're in the College of Business, they actually have their own career center that specifically works to help you find um, certain internships that are repeated on campus um, that our alumni have created really strong relationships with. Um, but we also have a general university career center. So if you want to look for more opportunities, they can help you out as well. They also do a really good job of helping students prepare in other capacities, not just when you're looking for that internship. And I encourage students to start utilizing some of their resources right away as a freshman. So go in and get your professional headshot. Maybe attend one of their LinkedIn uh, learning sessions. They also host mock interviews. I know I myself had jobs in high school, but I never actually had to be interviewed for any of them. It was all thanks to family connections. <laughs> And so I know I use, I could have used some help from our mock interviews. Um, and so those are really great opportunities for you to actually sit down with real people in your industry and do those mock interviews. And where can you improve? Where are your strengths? And prepare for those experiences. So a lot of great opportunities for you to help prepare professionally. Um, and success after graduation doesn't just have to be a job at the end of the day. Like I said, we have quite a few students who go on to get those accelerated degrees. We also have quite a few students who go into service or take um, that service year, um, which is a very Ignatian, very Jesuit thing. And so I know I some of my coworkers have done that and gone into different areas of service for a year prior to finding their employment. So that's a really nice way to give back to communities uh, and give back and be appreciative of the education that you've received. So um, really a, a ton of ways to define success post-graduation. All right. I'm not seeing any final questions, so I just want to reaffirm if you have questions or want to chat with me after this, I'd be more than happy to do so. Um, I will be your admissions counselor through all of this. So thanks so much, folks. All right, thank you so much, Jeanette. I really appreciate it. Um, I learned some things about Marquette, so I'm really excited. All right, so I have a few um, housekeeping items I just want to share with you guys. So um, again, thank you, um, thank you students so much for joining us. We really appreciate you guys taking the time to learn more about these different universities. Um, after this session ends, you will get a quick survey, uh, four questions, just to let us know what you thought, anything that we can improve on in the future. If you wanna learn more, or sign up for more of these amazing sessions, please do so. The link is provided, just go to inac.org slash virtual college exploration. If you would like to go back and listen to any more amazing facts about Marquette University, this recording will be available very shortly that you can take a look at. And again, for any sessions that you would like. So thank you guys again. Thank you, Jeanette. We really appreciate your time today. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your evening. Have a good day.